Uh, I can open us in prayer and we'll, we'll jump right in. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for this group that we have here with us today. And um, for those who are not with us, please uh, keep them safe. And I pray that even though they're not here, that they are getting spiritually fed in some way. Um, please, I, I pray that we take today's message away from not only Sunday school class, but also church, and we can carry those messages with us throughout the week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, um, so we're in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. And um, if someone wouldn't mind, we'll just go ahead and read the first three verses, so chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. Um, this is about the armor of God. Would someone be willing to read that? I can do that. Thank you. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And then one more. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Okay, thank you. Um, what's your version again? I'm just curious. It's just slightly different. From the New Revised Standard. Do um, you have the NIV? Yes, I always forget NIV, right? Yes, I have NIV. So, um, anything from that section that stands out to anyone that you want to talk about? When I think of these scriptures, it's like, yep, that sounds right. We need to put on and have everything we can get from God to resist and fight evil and the devil, but the thing that comes to my mind, how do we do that? Where do we get that? Mm -hmm. What's it mean to, 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 to do it? That was actually the first question I wanted to ask you all as a group was, <clears throat> um, how to be, how do you, how do we become strong in the Lord? If you read verse 11, it says, put on the full armor of God. But that, that kind of, let's can we break it down more than that? How do we become strong in the Lord? I, I found some supporting scripture that I liked. It's actually from Nehemiah 8, chapter 8, verse 10. Um, it says, do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Um, <clears throat> and it also made me think about um, a lesson we had before about um, cleaning our house so that God may want to dwell in us more. Um, Has anybody ever read a, a daily devotional first thing in the morning? Mm -hmm. I do it every day. And it sets your mind mm -hmm. for the day. So, okay, let's take two scenarios. Randy reads his devotion every day while he's eating breakfast or after he eats breakfast or whatever. So his mind's set on godly stuff. Mm -hmm. So I go in and I turn the TV on and I watch the morning news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I'm, yeah. as an example. So my mindset is on a totally different, you know, I'm already mad at the world by the time I leave, and Randy has got peace with the world by the time he leaves. I think, I think putting on the armor, that's one way to put on the armor, is to prepare yourself for the day. That's great. I love that. Yeah. And, and that's something that stuck with me from Randy's lesson last week was how how much of us are we dedicating to spending time trying to grow grow ourselves spiritually? And um, I'm like, I think that resonated with me because I feel like I'm not doing <laughs> dedicating that. I'm putting I'm not putting it first like I should. Uh, I'm not dedicating enough time to something that I believe is really the most important thing that there is. But, uh, um, oh, what stood out to me was this whole idea about who are in, okay, 
on the way here, I heard a song. I don't know if you all heard of Rage Against the Machine, but they have a song called Know Your Enemy. And there it was playing in the car on the way here. <laughs> and it's like, I feel like this is what this is about. Know your enemy because it's not against each other. And man, does that resonate with me today with what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. We get so mad at each other because we have stark differences. But it's not, it's, it's really, it's not with each other. If we kind of join forces and, and, and fight what's the devil's schemes and, and you know what's who the real enemy is, that's something I, I also brought up before was this idea of, um, I guess, playing defense. You know, I'm always thinking about how can I bring God into my life, but I'm not thinking much, much about who the devil is and how to defend myself from him. So I think this is what this whole section is about, it's about the armor and defending yourself from sin. Um, yeah, any, any other thoughts on, on that? About this idea of, oh, that's something else. Um, that is just something interesting I've never heard of. Um, it took me by surprise, but this idea of spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, I didn't know if anyone had any thoughts on that because in my brain, evil doesn't exist in, in heaven. So I don't think it necessarily means heaven, but maybe a realm not of this earth or what? I like what you said. I, I think that well, Satan was an angel, mm -hmm. has had powers, still has powers. Mm -hmm. He's out there. Now I, like you, I don't think about Satan sitting up there next to God. Right. Uh, it's like, okay, where is that rascal? Uh, <laughs> maybe he's in hell already. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. <clears throat> but I, 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 more and more all the time in our world, I see the power of Satan. And I feel like Satan is getting stronger. Look what he's doing to our country the world. Look what he's doing to churches. Churches, the, I mean, churches are at an all-time bad place. People don't go to church. People don't worship. You can't really talk about God outside of your church anymore. They've taken it out of everything. So, I don't know where he's at, but he certainly is there getting stronger by the day. Yeah. When I was thinking of heavenly places, I was thinking of <clears throat> churches, places where spiritual people gather, but yet there is, the devil is there also. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Today's reading that I'm going to be using is from John, okay. and it talks about when some of those left, when those they stopped following and they went home, Jesus not only knew they were going to, but he also knew the one very early on in his ministry, the one that was going to betray him. But let him stay around. Didn't call him out or anything. But, and, and I may have it totally wrong, but that's, that's the heavenly places that I think of. Because I think once we go to heaven eternally, uh, we have... We have run the race. We have fought the fight. Yep. We won the battle. Evil at that point is over. Yes. And it's no longer part of our existence. But to be naive enough to think that, well, there, was, there wouldn't be any evil in a church is being too naive. <laughs> That's part of what I talked about last week. We can come into church full of Christian people and still find strife, find issues, our relationships with other Christian spirit-filled people can cause us to fail or sin. Yeah, it is there. I'm borrowing a book from Nemi and one of the precepts or <laughs> A teacher is teaching his class um, this, this idea of it is better to be kind than right or is it better to be kind than right or something like that and yeah it's not about I'm right because of this and you're wrong because of this it's 
let's focus on what's important. When we break it all down, we can come together as a church, put those differences aside and focus on what's important. Um, so someone read the next section for me. Uh, it's 14 through 18. I'll read. Okay. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Thank you. So, I made a cheat sheet of all the, the elements. Um, but I don't think I want the main focus to be on, okay, why is um, the helmet salvation? Why is the, um, you know, the spirit um, the sword, and, and I might not get into super detail about that, but um, so the different, I'm just going to call them elements, <clears throat> um, for lack of a better word, uh, we got truth, righteousness, readiness, faith, salvation, it says the spirit slash word of God, the spirit which is the word of God, and then I put a little asterisk next to prayer, because it doesn't compare prayer as being an armor, but it says also, um, with all kinds of prayers and requests. Um, let's go to, let's look at faith. So, uh, where is it? Uh, what is it? Okay, in addition, let's see, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all of the flaming arrows of the evil one. This is what my book version says. What, what are some examples of flaming arrows in your life? or that you see observed in the world today. So to me, flaming arrows are like, what what temp what sin is coming at you? What, like for an example, I think temptation to be a flaming arrow that we have to defend ourselves against. Denying God if you find someone who is a non-believer that's okay. thrown at you. That you have to deal with. I I think also, I'll, I'll use my example that I shared when we opened. Faith is us having the faith that, come what may, like for me now, it's the insanity that's going on at work. It it if I would focus on that, it would devastate me. I would just. I, I, I just wouldn't be able to to be at all a decent person to be around and Lily might question that already but it, if we focus on the problems the evils the temptations it's easy to be defeated and then we're like you know what good is trying I can't beat all that maybe when you get the diagnosis and it is cancer <coughs> It's really easy to say, okay, Lord, this is it. I know there's no sense in me going on now. But if we have faith, and, and, and we should have faith, then we can get through whatever comes our ways. So it, it changes how we look at it, and it helps to give us the strength that I can go on tomorrow. I can get up tomorrow. I can do this. So. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. I think the, the story I closed with last was that there's a giant God in me. I think if we don't have that giant God in us today, um, that those flaming arrows will they'll penetrate. They just won't bounce off. Yeah. For me, Wednesday was one of the set of flaming arrows. I, I couldn't believe the injustice that was being done by just a 10-minute video without 
very many words spoken and and uh, you know everybody jumped on the bandwagon you know, the instructors led a little bit and everybody just just hmm. jumped on so it can be it can be a I thought of Randy when first and talking about work uh, but yeah it can be anything you know I, I think of people that aren't Christian or even atheists Man, I just can't imagine going through life with all of the challenges, tribulations, temptation, everything that happens to us. How do you deal with that without having God there and having God in your life? I just can't imagine. I really, I, I just. Um, there's a one of these elements that stands out in the sense of it's not so much armor as it is a weapon. Mm -hmm. What is that one? The sword of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Why do you think, why do you think, Paul, right? <laughs> why do you think he's uh, comparing the spirit using the sword as a metaphor for the spirit. I know I said I wasn't going to go. In this war, way. if you're not advancing, you're retreating. And he, he's this is he set this up as a, us to think of being a Christian as a battle. So if we're not if we don't have that that sword and we are advancing. Pressing forward, yeah. That's why he talks about the shoes. Put whatever on your feet that you you'll be ready to go. Don't walk around barefooted because you're not going to be able to move very good. Barefooted fighting in the rocks. Be ready. Be prepared. Um, I think that's, for, for me, that's, you know, put the breastplate on to take care of you, of righteousness, but advance at all, at all, at all stages in your life. Yeah. Keep advancing. Perfect. Um, yeah. You know, put your belt on and tighten it up because you're going to need it. Mm -hmm. It's going to need to be tight. Um, or fasten it, it says, or whatever. Stand firm, therefore, fasten the belt of truth around your waist. Yeah. I uh, I think if I were to sum up everything in one word of this, it might be prepare uh, preparedness. That that's one of the readiness. Um, are we ready? You know, at at, at any t given point in time to. To do the right thing, to share the word. To meet God. To meet God. Yeah. Um, let's let's go ahead and read the last part. Um, I can read it, or, or unless anyone else is willing to read. Nineteen and twenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to you to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Thank you. Is it okay to pray for ourselves or to ask others to pray for us? I don't do that. Really? But it is. It is okay. Oh, I think it's kind of necessary. Yeah. It's, to me, praying for ourselves is admitting to God, God, we can't do this without you. We need you. And there's, I mean, we we are insufficient. We're, it says we're powerless. I think that's a healthy thing. Absolutely. I, I agree. Um, so, <clears throat> what I liked about, what, what I liked about this, or that I noticed, is that, yes, Paul is asking the Ephesians to help them fearlessly declare the word of God. But by asking for that help, he's going to he's going to help so many other people. So in a, in a way it's not selfish at all. It's it's asking for help me help everyone cuz he's trying to spread the <laughs> spread the word. And um, that phrase that really stood out to me was ambassador in chains. So for Paul it was very Literal. I think he wrote this while he was in prison. 
I always look at Denny for his. But he name. didn't stop. I mean, that's yeah, perfect but he didn't example. Stop. He could have just sat in there and laid back and say, "Feed me two or three times a day, and I'm just gonna pull my heels." Yeah, but he he didn't. He's already talking about continuing to do, spread the word as soon as it gets out, right? So, um, so for Paul, this was a very literal thing. He was probably literally in chains or in prison. Um. So what are we willing to be an, an ambassador in chains for? Meaning, we want to, we don't, thankfully today, for the most part, we don't have to worry about death or imprisonment for being Christian. At least not in this country. So, maybe for the most part. Not yet. There might be a Not yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. But what are we willing to endure? What are we willing to endure? I think, Nancy, what did you say earlier? Are we re willing to endure ridic ridicule from our non-Christian peers, or are we willing to endure looking like the crazy Christian? You know, you know, people have assumptions about that label. Mm -hmm. um, so just something to think about. What are you willing to endure to be an ambassador for Christ? You're going to find out about... Uh... Probably by the time I ask you to eat the candy, it'll be about 11.30. In about a half hour, we're going to see what people's willing to endure. <laughs> You'll find out. Okay. I'm so excited. So, yeah. You will find out. There's candy out there? There's oh, candy out there. <laughs> Everybody like, gets a piece. I was, I was thinking of the Hershey Kisses you passed. I'm like, I already had, it's not my birthday, it's not the anniversary. What are you talking about? <laughs> Everybody gets one today. Everybody gets one. You know, I, I, I'm still stuck on what Denny said earlier today. Do we have a responsibility? Like Denny, when he was listening to what was going on, he could have easily sat there saying, well, nobody else feels this way, so... I must be I, wrong. Yeah, I must be wrong, mm -hmm. and I don't want to throw myself out there and let them bash me. Well... If we feel convicted about something, do we have a responsibility to God? I mean, God puts that in our mind, in our heart. It's like, this isn't right. Do we have a responsibility to be God's instrument and to speak up? Like or do we just, no, I don't want to face ridicule, ridicule yeah. so I'm going to shut up. And I was What's the only deal? one. Yeah. I was the only one. And I didn't care. So you were being an ambassador. Because I'm, I was yeah. hoping that the next time somebody gets with some, behind somebody driving 25 miles an hour, they see somebody in a mask by themselves in a car, they'll stop and think. Mm -hmm. And that's, you're never going to end racism unless you stop and you think. Mm -hmm. That's not right. I shouldn't have said that to that person. Or I shouldn't feel, act, think. think the way I'm thinking. Yeah. Because that's not right, you know. Yeah. You know, you talk about you always, before you speak, you process it. That's what I was, by doing what I was doing, I was hoping that I would get them to process before they spoke out just because everybody else. Well, we see it all the time on Facebook. You know, people put all this outrageous mm -hmm. stuff out there on Facebook. Oh, yeah. And, you know, there's been some things. I'm kind of like, you know, I'm sitting there and think, how could they actually put this out there? This is not true, and I can prove it's not true. Mm -hmm. But I hesitate sometimes. I say, okay, do I want to get in the middle of this? Is it my place to say, hey, that's not right? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But, but you know, you, you, have to, you have to take everything into consideration, where the other person's coming from, what they're dealing with, and lots of that lots of times you don't know that. Yeah. Um, I guess to wrap it up, I'll, I'll ask of you all, um, to think back on the elements, uh, truth, righteousness, readiness, faith, salvation. Oh, I didn't mention, by the way, salvation, that's the one that is like a gift that's just given to us. We don't have to, that was, that, that stood out to me, salvation. Um, spirit, word of God, prayer. Thinking about all of those, which one do you think is the weakest link in your life? And how can you strengthen it this week? Um, that's all I have. So, Denny, would you close us out, please? Sure. I'll pray. Good gracious, Heavenly Father, and we, we thank you for today's uh, 
writing as Paul is writing to the Ephesians and encouraging them, uh, just as he's encouraging us this morning as, as we've read it and discussed it. It's, dear Lord, let us uh, let us do put that um, that breastplate of righteousness upon ourselves and and pick up the sword for you where um, where injustices are, or as we see them, injustices as Christians, and and just share the word of God with others. Uh, so that when salvation does come, um, that we can look you in the eye and, and say that I've done everything I can do, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.